morning, everybody. I'm Carrie Gray. I'm the AIC at Carrick, and I'm going to share my screen. So, Sandra, Dominique, you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, I'm Dominique Pleasant Moore, and I am the uh, ELA lead K through five. And I am Sandra Hogue. I am the ELA lead for the AIS schools. And it's a pleasure to be here with you guys this morning. So we thought it would just be super fun this morning to talk about digital journaling. What a prime time to get our students writing about what's going on in our world today. So we're going to get started right away. Dominique, would you like to get us start with why our students should be journaling during this time? Yeah, we wanted to talk about why we felt it was important and a really good time for students to put their thoughts to paper. Um, studies show that journaling about feelings reduces stress and anxiety. Um, we were thinking we probably have a lot of students out there that are feeling a little stress, feeling a little bit anxious about what's going on, and journaling gives them that opportunity um, to put their feelings on paper. Uh, it gives students the opportunity to share thoughts and feelings with friends. Um, journaling during this time can help students make sense of life in the age of coronavirus. And it allows them to share with others five to 10 years from now what life was like during this time, almost like their own little time capsule that they could share um, after they're having after they've had kids or grandkids right. journaling about this event can help students bring closure to the end of the year i felt like teachers could start journaling and as it got closer to um, may 27th they could start kind of giving them a chance of what it feels like not to go back to school and have discussions with their peers and their teacher to give themselves a little closure. Yes, and just to add to that, um, our students are gonna be the primary sources for the future. And if they are, so many of them are so young, if they're not journaling and documenting this time, um, it's likely they'll forget a lot of what they were thinking and feeling and going through. So we really feel like journaling right now, even for us as adults and teachers is, and very important um, just for the future message about what it was like to live during this time. And, and when you think about historically, um, the major events, and I think this would, would qualify as a major event in American history, if you think about being able to journal at this point in time, I think uh, we have more opportunities, more variety in the ways that we capture our ideas than we have had in any other uh, major historical time. And so the possibilities are really wide open for this. So it's, it's, um, it's an exciting, uh, exciting part of this, um, this journey, if, if you can find some silver lining in it to be able to be archivists, to be those pri primary sources during this time. All right, so now we just wanna talk a little bit about the benefits of journaling. And one of the most important things is that it's gonna provoke more reflection. So we're really allowing our students and even ourselves time to reflect on all that is happening on the NTI work we're doing on our personal lives, our professional lives, um, how things have changed with our friends, um, ways that we're coping and dealing. So just providing an opportunity to be more reflective. Um, encouraging students to take charge of their learning and their feelings. So by opening up the idea of journaling, students have some freedoms within that to kind of take charge of how they want to write and what they want to write and how they want to express their, their ideas and thoughts and feelings. Yeah, and, and it helps them to find their voice. I really love that one. I think, you know, as one of the greatest human needs is the need to be heard. And so I think journaling provides students with that ability to say, here I am, I'm part of this uh, event, I'm part of the world, and here are my thoughts behind uh, what's happening in my life right now. And it helps the students make connections between what's really important to them, the curriculum, and the world. So we're allowing them to have that voice to journal about the things that are affecting them the most, while hopefully um, dabbling in some fun writing techniques, hitting on curriculum that we want them to work on, and making those connections um, with their greater world, because clearly this pandemic is affecting everyone, not just us um, here in JC. Yes. 
Yes, and it helps students to recognize, as it says here, the importance of self-exploration, questioning, making connections. Um, it's really just that messy thinking on paper, right? So we often know in the writing process that things are really messy and you go on a journey before you land on something that you feel a sense of pride or you feel uh, that you've synthesized in your thinking. And so it helps students to just kind of be more aware if they're journaling of their own explorations, their own questions, their own uh, connections that they're making between what's happening uh, uh, within their household, across the community, across the world right now. Ladies, I love how you said that these journals are going to be looked at almost like time capsules for these kids to be able to say, what was I thinking during this? Really almost like a, a diary so that they can look back and see. And as a as we are in JCPS, think about the artifacts that there's those are going to come back and see from uh, and then what information our teachers later on when they get back to school are going to be able to pull from those. So this is just so it's inspiring because um, if we don't I always as an ECE teacher, if it if I don't write it down, it never really happened because they forget what how they felt. So this is so mm -hmm. powerful. I love it. And to just to add to that, really um, doing it, doing it the journaling digitally allows for some freedoms that we don't have when we're handwriting. So we're going to share with you some really fun ideas of ways to capture um, other ideas um, and imagery and writing and different forms that students can add their ideas um, on the computer. And so just to think about our struggling writers and the more practice that we give them, the more opportunity that we give them to write, the better they, they are going to become as writers. And not even our struggling writers, but all of our writers, just because we know that practice makes perfect, right? So we want our students practicing their writing skills, um, practicing their author's craft, and this gives them the forum to do just that. And it helps uh, the, the teachers, right, to have greater insight into their, who their students are um, and, and where they're performing academically. So if you think about um, what the statement I made earlier about the, the need for kiddos to feel heard, um, writing is really a wonderful way to get to know your students. And that has proven itself to me time and time again over the years. And I think during this time when kiddos are really probably going through more than um, they are during the more traditional times, um, you know, this provides us an opportunity to really see them um, in, in possibly some deeper ways. And I appreciate that about it. And lastly, we were thinking about all of the opportunities students have to try some different writing techniques. What a safe place to be brave and try something that um, you know you might not get a grade on, but you can dabble in a little bit of poetry if you want to write a poem today, um, or whatever that case may be, um, that the students want to tackle something they've never tried before. It's a safe place to do that. So today we wanted to engage you in these ideas of journaling digitally and thinking about it in terms of individual journey, journaling. So a student might journal on their own and also community journaling where we might offer opportunities for our whole classroom to journal together around a central idea. And the first thing we want to show you is my new favorite tool, Jamboard. And if you love Jamboard, after I show you these things today, I know Cheryl Bibby has a presentation today at 2.30, and Elaine Abenatha has a presentation Friday at 11.30. So, or, no, wrong, 10.30 with Elaine on Friday. And... Um, so you can learn how to use this tool um, at an even deeper level. But I want to show you some ideas for individual journaling, thinking about students just creating individual daily journals, right? Writing about anything going on on any given day, um, giving them specific topics they can write about, asking them to make collages, and thinking about community, community journaling in the sense that maybe you have daily class entries and you're using questions to promote thinking. Um, students are creating their own page about a specific topic, so you can use Jamboard for an idea, question, 
and students can create their own page within Jamboard. Um, I also wanted to touch on this idea of using journaling to help support this compelling and supporting question idea. Um, that's tomorrow, today and tomorrow at 1130. Um, Ryan New and his team are focusing on creating choice boards around compelling questions. So this will support that. And then lastly, I want to show you something that I learned this week called joy spotting. Um, and actually, Sandra Hoke shared this article with me. I believe it came from Dr. Smith. Is that right, Sandra? Yes, originally. She shared it on Twitter and I kind of yeah, ran with it. So um, I really loved this idea and jumped on it as an opportunity to journal. So um, I linked the article there if you want to go back and read it. But the idea behind it is just that even during times of seriousness, like we're going through now, it's really important to look around and turn your attention to the little things in life that, that help you find some joy. So I'm going to show you how I use that in Jamboard. So here is the first idea. And as you can see with Jamboard, you can create all kinds of different things through uploading imagery, um, using these little sticky notes here, these different colored sticky notes. You can handwrite um, or you can add images from the computer or the Internet. So over here, I just posted a question. How does it feel to live during a pandemic? And then you can add a sticky note with your idea for what you want the students to do. Um, it just said create a collage with sticky notes, images, and handwritten messages. And so I just put together something that um, kind of answers this question from different points of view uh, right now. So learning all these new things over and over again, feels like we're changing everything we know right now. Um, and then over here, it's trying to be creative with your time and do silly things. So why not teach your dog to read? Um, so you can see I just created a little collage there. The other idea going what, back I, what, what I love about that, Carrie, is uh, it infuses addition, it, it infuses new energy into a traditional journal entry. So you think about those um, composition notebooks that we used for years. When you think of a journal entry, students, I encourage them to use um, words and images, but what that technology infuses um, brings an extra bit of energy to it for me. And I, I can see it being less intimidating for uh, those struggling writers because it's not how, how much do I need to write? How much of the page do I have to fill? If I'm thinking in sticky notes, then it's less intimidating for me as maybe a struggling writer. So I love that about journaling on a Jamboard. I agree. I agree too. Um, so here's an idea if you were going to have students do daily journals. And I just kind of came up with a sample that maybe you're focusing on transition words. So you challenge your students to use that in their daily journal today. So here a student might just tell the parts of their day and what is going on during a typical day um, during social distancing. Um, and the same idea that Sandra said, it's less intimidating when you're using a sticky note and you know, you, you know, you can only write so many words on a sticky note. And then here's an idea for that community classroom journaling where a teacher might ask a question and throw out. So I asked, how do you feel about NTI? Justify your feelings using evidence from your experience. And then every student in your class can add a sticky note and answer that question. And then they can see each other's. And it would be really fun if they could go back and add to each other's sticky note to give, to give each of the other students feedback about their ideas as well. And then here is joy spotting. So um, going out and about in the neighborhood and finding all the little simple pleasures uh, that bring me joy. And students can, where have you found joy this week? And students can upload pictures or they can add a sticky note or they can handwrite a message about different things that they are looking around and finding joy in the world around them during this time. And then lastly, the idea of the compelling question. So maybe you put a supporting question or even your big compelling question up and then you just have students sticky note their ideas and journal, journal along with the whole class how they are thinking about this compelling question.
So those were just some of the ideas to share with you about Jamboard and how it might be effective in helping digital journaling right now. And I'm going to move over. Dominique's going to take you through Google Slides. Thanks, Carrie. So I played around with Google Slides and some things that uh, we felt that you could do in Google Slides were daily journal entries that allow for digital creativity. You, you could drop in videos, images, drawings, uh, song clips. Um, a book using text features, including titles, headings, images, and captions. Um, you can log um, op uh, observations of spring changes over time. Um, we even discussed how I sit here at my office and look out the window and I could have taken a picture every day of the tree that I see and how it's changed over a period of time. Uh, journal entries about specific topics are questioned, um, even using what we uh, presented on what's going on in this picture in that journal. Um, collages or images to document ideas, reflections about feelings, experiences, and thoughts. So I created a little journal um, in Google Slides. So I went into Google Slides and um, even changed the size of my paper so it looks more like a journal. I just threw in a little clip art. Kids, your students can decorate their journal any way that they would like and just put the cover page this journal belongs to. Um, and on the next slide, I created a table of contents. Um, and each page is linked, so the student or the teacher who's going in to um, give a little feedback or read their journals doesn't have to search page by page. You just click on the link and it'll take you to that specific date. Um, so April 23rd, like I just left some for free write. Whatever a student's feeling like that day, they can write. On April 24th, I dropped in what's going on in this picture. Students can respond in their journal um, using this resource um, that we presented on yesterday. What did they think was going on in this picture? They can journal and drop ideas there. Um, on the next, I put, you don't have to click on it, Carrie, but it's a song, the song Happy by For Real. Um, you describe the images that come to mind when you listen to this song. Kids can respond or drop their own song in there. They could respond, uh, respond in their journal with a poem about that song, rewriting that song, anything that comes to mind when they hear that song. Um, but that was just an example on how you could drop in different uh, types of images or links. And this is another prompt that you could give students. How might you update or re-image a favorite childhood book? And so this is originally the snowy day and they've re called it the glowy day. And the students can underneath change uh, the image of this book or update it. And if you look closely, Peter is actually on a cell phone looking at TikTok videos. So different ideas on how you can use just the Google slide. It's not your typical journaling that we probably did growing up where you just have your little composition book and maybe every once in a while you could cut a picture out and, and glue it in there, but there are just endless um, things that you can do digitally. That talk about, talk about an artifact. These are going to be amazing. And the, I want to go back to you saying that, the link, using those links makes it even, I mean, it just expands that ability. So if it's a song that I never heard about, then I could use that link and I could go to YouTube and, and finally hear it. And I just, I'm like, oh, this is great. It's just, it's, it just exponentially grows. Love yes. this. I know we're so excited when we get together and talk about it. And, and when you do sit down and talk with your colleagues, it just, you come up with even more ideas. I mean, it's just endless. Jenny Averly just said in the chat, she said, think about how we could transform the writer's notebook with this tool. She says, I love the comp composition notebook, but this is such a nice digital alternative. So thank you, ladies. All right. And now, uh, Dr. Hogue, share with us your amazing photo voice idea. So thank you. I, I 
I personally love it a great deal and uh, I'm excited about finding new ways to use this tool. Uh, Photo voice is uh, yet another way to capture the thinking uh, and the ideas of the world, right? So uh, it puts cameras in the hands of, of people um, with good information and life experiences uh, to share, right? So their perspectives. And it was developed, it, came, it was first developed out of China uh, and it was designed to capture the voices and as I said, and experiences of marginalized communities. So in order for, if you think about within our city, um, the densely populated low uh, um, or high poverty areas, it's, it was a tool designed to give voice to the people who are often hushed and placed in a corner in many ways. And so uh, in that process, uh, it, it honors the fact that people who are living the experiences are the experts at telling their own stories, that we don't need cameras coming in from the media saying, oh, this is Sandra's downtrodden journey uh, through the West End of Louisville, right? Uh, because maybe in my perspective, it wasn't so downtrodden, right? So for me, I think I had an amazing upbringing and I grew up the youngest of you know, six in a household of eight people, right? And in, in, a, in a, a small dwelling in the urban city, high poverty area. But I didn't feel, you know, woe was me about my upbringing. So I felt like it was probably uh, the best experience for me. So uh, it honors the fact that that people are the best storytellers of their own journey, right? And what they invite the participants to do is to take a camera, capture that reality, and um, and then they provide the context for the readers. So if it's a picture from for that you've taken that captures your reality, but outsiders who you're trying to educate or inform don't understand the context, the writing coupled with that image gives them um, a better sense of what you're trying to communicate about your reality. And then those images are brought together by all who have participated and they codify uh, the collection. So they they identify themes, they bring it together, they organize it, they, you know, if we look at this set of images together, it brings to mind that this may be a theme of people living uh, similar journeys, etc. And so they, uh, they share and they discuss and um, it collectively allows the group to uh, approach or deal with a challenge in the world. And so it gives power and voice to these people who may be feeling like they live in isolated worlds, but collectively uh, uh, it gives rise for action, right? It gives them uh, collective voices in order to, to argue or to advocate for things that are important for them. And then the screen just went away. So I can't see what's next. I'm sorry, Carrie, can you buck back? Sandra, it's very um, Gordon Parks-ish. Do you know Gordon Parks, the photographer? Yeah, Where absolutely. He it's very much like that and that's where i get a warm feeling of being students being able to tell their own story yes and they are they are the experts at telling their own stories they really don't need you know someone else to come in as i said to, to do that for them and so in my process in the way i have used it i once again, you decide on a theme or a question. So they're not just randomly capturing images because one of the things that uh, when I used this in my dissertation, I was cautioned by uh, my committee chair to do was not have them take 20 pictures each, right? So coming together to organize and identify themes across 20 images from 10 participants either even can be a massive collection, right? So you decide on a theme or a question for the group to explore and you give um, the, them the, the, the total number of images you'd like them to capture. Um, that's an, an important piece. You also let them know like the platform, how they're going to share those, how you're going to collect them um, and information about the art gallery and, and how you're going to pull those things together and what you, you're asking that they capture in the writing. And then you collect as the curator um, the the, um, the images and you process those, um, Walgreens will do, right? And then as a group, you come together, as I said, to have that conversation about what do you think this says to answer this question that we're exploring? What does it say about our reality in this space? And so um, you can synthesize that um, to learn about trends and then you can act if it is, if it is an example that requires action, you can act, um, as I said, for um, change, right? So 
uh, that's that's one of the the um, that's the way I've kind of peered down um, that big idea of photo voice to fit my needs. Uh, so during this time with of the coronavirus, um, I've been you and social distancing. I've been using photo voice with my own personal children. And if you see if you can see in the bottom right hand corner of that slide. Um, it, the question we're exploring is in what ways has the coronavirus changed your daily life? And I pose that question to my children and me who are in this space together day in and day out from NTI in the basement to upstairs to, you know, all of the things that, that have changed in our lives due to this era that we're living in right now. So you'll see in that image, they are sitting at the dining room table capturing um, their placards for the images that they selected. So in the first one, you'll see um, we've been involved in a lot of virtual 5Ks. We tend to do 5Ks every year, every summer around or around this time. But this year we've done more than ever and we're doing them virtually. And so what you see there is one that I, I use with the kids that we could craft together because I wanted um, them to be, they had never written a museum placard, but we went online, we explored some of them and kind of uh, mimicked our work after that mentor text, right? And so uh, that first one says the great toilet paper race, which was one of the, um, one of the um, virtual races that we participated in. And it has the location, it has the date, it has uh, the medium, which is a digital photograph and the text that we crafted together. Uh, with my second and fourth grader says, our family started participating in virtual 5Ks to keep healthy during the pandemic. Because of COVID, we have to keep social distance. We get fresh air and earn medals. Toilet paper is scarce. And it has our names by Reagan Grayson and Sandra Hogue. And so I won't read the others to you, but if you'd like, you can zoom in on those. But this is one way that I plan to catalog what's happening um, using digital, you know, using uh, digital journaling, using journaling to capture where we are um, as part of a time capsule for just my personal family. And what this will do is placehold this journey. We can We have far more images than what you see here. And we're going to continue to capture others. And my plan is to bind them in um, in a book. Once we come out on the other side, I'm claiming that once we come out on the other side of this to bind them in a book. And once again, we are primary sources. We are archivists. We are placeholding this journey that we're on. And I think what this question does in this case, and I know we're down to less than a minute, what this question does, it kind of gives uh, an umbrella. If you think about compelling questions that our social studies friends are, uh, are encouraging us to lean into, it gives us a compelling question to explore. And for me, I'm trying that out with my personal family right now. So um, that's, uh, yeah, that's, photo voice and I'm super excited about it as you can tell but um